Oh, by the way, I keep forgetting to bring up how great the Indianapolis gig was. First of all, I got to come back and play this theater. Do um, you remember that story I told you guys and I put the video up? Where uh, I, I was playing a theater upstairs and downstairs was that Totally Elmo show, whatever the fuck it was. Keeping up with the Muppets, whatever the fuck it was. I don't know what to come, you know. Um, and when I walked by, the door to the backstage of their theater was open. And like all, like the Count was sitting there and Bert was there and Oscar the Grouch. Like these actors in these suits and they were just chilling out, you know, and they looked tired from doing a bunch of shows. So it was hilarious. So I filmed them and all of a sudden Bert got up and came walking over and was waving his hands. I thought he was saying, what's up? I'm like, oh, look at Bert. Hey, he's coming up here. And he fucking reached out and slammed the door. And I was just like, wait, wow, like he really is a cunt. Bert really is the happy-go-lucky one. I was joking in Indianapolis that um, that Ernie's Ernie's parents like were accepting of his homosexuality, right? Where Bert's weren't. Like they kicked him out of the family, so it caused him to be like sad and bitter. You know what I mean? Um, but thank God he had Ernie in his life, right? Cheer him up. Um, anyways, and then I posted the video. And then Sesame Street told me I had to take it down. The children's television workshop was like, you got to take it down. That's that's not legal footage, which I think it was. I mean, what? I didn't understand what exactly were they going to do to me if I didn't take it down. I don't know. So I took it down. I was like, all right, whatever. You know, what it was was they were going through that shit with the Elmo guy. They said, you know, fucking uh, was grab ass and was some kid. I have no fucking clue. But anyways, so this time around, I got to play downstairs where the Elmo theater was. And uh, it's one of the great theaters I've ever played in my life as far as the crowd was just on top of you. They had like those those little balcony things. They had like four of them on each side. It was like an old hockey arena. It was just fucking awesome. Um, just been an incredible, incredible fucking, um, incredible fucking uh, tour here. And we went to one of the sickest fucking cigar bars. I've ever been to, which of course, because I was fucking an idiot, I just walked into it. I gotta look it up right now. Indianapolis cigar bars. All right, let's see, let's see. Blend. This fucking place might have been the greatest cigar bar I've ever been to. It's fucking incredible. You have to go to it, and they're opening one in Nashville and Dallas. All right? Just sick selection of fucking cigars. They had the Davidoff, uh, Davidoff, uh, Nicaraguan, um, all these other just amazing cigars. That's the one that I smoked. And then they had the, like all these whiskeys, limited edition whiskeys and bourbons that, um, that I thought, I, I mean, did you know they, they had, they had Jack Daniels Sinatra. I'd never even heard of that. Me and Bartnick were like, what the fuck is that? Like that was his drink. I'm like, you just saying Sinatra because that was his drink? They're like, no, that's a, a limited edition. Um, I'm looking it up right now. Jack Daniels Sinatra. Where is it here? Yeah, I never, I never fucking heard of this shit. And of course they were sold out of it. Let me do the old wiki here. Wikipedia. Jack Daniels Sinatra wiki. I, what, did, you, did you mean that? Of course I meant that. You know what I meant? Ah, God damn it. They always do show Select, Sinatra Select. That's what it was called. Anyways, it was fucking just an amazing, amazing place. And uh, don't you hate these fucking websites when you go there and you got to fucking put in your birthday? All right, I'll give you my birthday. We'll say uh, November 11th. 1892 enter please enter a valid year they don't think it let's see let's see what year they'll actually let 1893 they won't let let's see when they believe in 1890 how about 1899 do they they don't believe anybody's alive how about 1900 see that's what it is anything with an 18 go fuck yourself enter sinatra selects bottle of 90 proof and made with unique sinatra barrels it sounds like fucking bullshit to me jack daniel sinatra what is a sinatra barrel 
It's got a fucking toupee on it. Sorry. Select pays a tribute to Jack's biggest fan, Mr. Frank Sinatra. These Sinatra barrels have deep grooves on the inside of their staves, which exposes the whiskey to extra layers of oak. Ah, God damn it. Now I got to get a bottle. But you can't just get a bottle. They got a video here of Frank Sinatra pouring it. I wonder if his fucking next to kin gets any money. Dude, they got a picture here sitting at the bar of Sinatra laughing while Jackie Gleason's laughing with them. Frank Sinatra and Jackie Gleason were close friends. In fact, it was Jack, Jackie Gleason himself who introduced Frank to Jack Daniels. And as the story is told, it was sometime in the 1940s. Jackie and Frank were sitting together at a bar in New York City. Frank was forlorn over a woman. He probably wrote a great song about it and was sharing his troubles with Gleason. Frank informed his good friend that he was in need of, of a serious drink. Turning to Sinatra, Gleason responded, Jack Daniels, that's a good place to start. And the rest, as they say... It was history. Oh, Frank said he needed a drink. Well, there you go. All right, what the fuck am I talking about at this point? All right, let's get back to the podcast. Um, so definitely check out Blendon if you live in... Um, if you live in... Uh, Nashville or Dallas, they're on their way over there. 